the story behind the statue of Shiva and scan the sculpture. The story behind the statue, perhaps the standout artifact. Among the repatriated works of art from Douglas Latchford's personal collection is the unique Shiva and Skanda sculpture that took pride of place at the recent Peace Palace exhibition. Presided over by the Prime Minister Sandak Hun Sen since it was returned by Latchford's family in September 2021. It has been cleaned, restored and verified by the National Museum Stone Conservators. Behind the scenes, awaiting its unveiling to the general public, originally. It was one of a number of rare statues inside the central chambers of Prasad Krachap, a temple within the Kokur complex. It's dated to the first half of the 10th century and represents the god of destruction and new beginnings, Shiva and his son Skanda. Scholars have suggested that the two figures may also portray King Jayavarman IV, Kokur's founder, and his son Harshavarman II, and that Prasad Krachap festooned with multiple inscriptions and sculptures, was a special temple reserved for the royal family, known as the God of War. Skanda was the firstborn son of Shiva and brother of Ganesha, and also goes by the names of Kartikeya, Kumar and Murugan, with the remote Kokur complex left virtually forgotten over time. Looters descended upon its treasures in the 1970s and 1990s, and from his testimony we know that Tok Teek, aka Lion, and his gang of looters unearthed and removed 12 sculptures from Prasad Krachap. In September 1997, they found the sculpture of Shiva with Skanda under dirt in the western antechamber of the temple, as well as another notable sculpture of Skanda, the peacock. The looted items were transported over several days by ox cart and truck to the border with Thailand and the home of a broker, who sold them to a collector known as Sia Ford, now known to be Douglas Latchford. The British dealer boasted about the sculpture's rarity, his 2000 for coffee table book adoration, and glory, putting the Shiva with Skanda image on the cover, and in the hands of a so-called private collector, which turned out to be himself. Excavation work at Krachap. In October 2020 found two small fragments belonging to the statue, a piece of Shiva's right ear, and Skanda's left arm, which have been reattached, and, after the Peace Palace exhibition, the sculpture has this week gone on display in the National Museum in Phnom Penh. Latchford himself had this to say about the self-same sculpture at Shiva with Skanda in an interview with Apollo magazine in 2008. It was on display in his London apartment at the time. This is spectacular. I was shown a picture of it in pieces in the mid-80s. The head of Shiva was off, the arms broken, Skanda's feet broken. I bought it. It arrived in three pieces, Neil Perry Smith, one of the leading restorers of stone, metal and gold based in London, put it together. These had been clean breaks, there's no restoration. Go by the wall so you can see Skanna's face. I sum it up in one word, adoration. For investigators, clean breaks are a telltale sign that the artwork may have been intentionally broken. With breaks such as these, a lawn specific, easily repairable points being done to ease transport and future reassembly when large cumbersome sculptures are removed from their fine spots by looters. Whilst Latchford was never found guilty of trafficking in stolen and looted Cambodian antiquities, he died in August 2020. British art restorer Perry Smith was arrested in July 2021 and charged on 29 counts by US authorities. Let's take a look at the sculpture itself. Dated to the second quarter of the 10th century, hewn from a single piece of sandstone, the two figures of Shiva and Skanda are resting on a solid base. Shiva is sat with a straight back, his right foot on top of his left knee, his arms are in front of his chest offering a sampia. His sturdy body is bedecked with jewelry, with an intricate necklace, armbands, bracelets and belts around his torso and abdomen, all carved in minute detail and a feature of the Kokur sculptors. You can see identical ornamentation on the giant Garuda, Rama and the wrestling apes on display at the National Museum. His vertically pleated sampot finishes just above the knee, with an overhanging flap resting on his lap and hiding a belt, knotted at the rear. Under his chin he has three beauty lines around his neck, an incised hairline ending in sharp points at the temples, joins with a beard that forms an inverted V under his mouth. His eyes are wide open under a pronounced brow line, 
with a third eye in the middle of his forehead. A telltale sign of Shiva. His lips are full and an upturned mustache appears to offer a smile. While his ears are large and include an elongated open earlobe for the addition of jewelry, the two-tiered diadem is intricately carved with diamond-shaped florets, flowers and pearls and tie at the rear. With a substantial cylindrical yada with horizontal braids topped off by the crescent moon. At the front, a rather plump skanda is decorated in an altogether different fashion. His hair is minimal, suggesting his extreme youth. Though his earlobes are extended and hose circular earrings resting on his shoulders, he is standing straight and his arms are raised. So his hands are gently touching those of his father, he has 11 jewelry bangles on each arm. He also has a necklace with long pendants, as well as simple ankle bracelets, for Skanda's sampot. An unusually ham belt is decorated with hanging leaf-like pendants, a truly distinctive and unique piece of Khmer art.